couple of grade 12s. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how the formulae for your surface area and your volume calculations are derived for your various shapes. Now, I realize that your formulae will always be given to you in, in your exams, but it um, has come to my attention that you actually need to understand what these formulae mean, because when you are doing volume in your exams, there will be complex shapes that are given to you, which means you are going to have to work out which part of the vo volume formula to use and which part not. Um, and the same for surface area. So you need to understand what each of the elements of the formulae are referring to. So I refer you to um, weeks 15 and 16 of your Moodle notes for the surface area um, notes and to week 17 and 18 for your volume notes. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to show you um, shape by shape how these formulae are derived. So starting with a cube. Now remember your cube is basically just your three-dimensional square. So if we're looking at the surface area of a cube, remember a square has got equidistant sides. So we can just call the length of any side in a square S, knowing that all four lengths are the same. So that is in the two dimension. So we know that a two dimensional um, cube, V, or rather a two dimensional square, the surface area is as simple as S squared. But we are now looking at the, three di the third dimension. So in order to do that, we need to visualize what a cube looks like in the third dimension. So it's not a great drawing, but you, you get the drift, I hope. In order to derive the formula for the surface area, I want you to visualize what it would look like if we were to take this cube and flatten it. So imagine that the roof or the lid of the cube is, is blue and so is the base. And imagine that the um, four sides are red. Okay, so we see that we have got six sides. Now, if I'm going to take that cube and flatten it, it will have a cross shape that looks just like a cross. So the roof of your cube after you've unfolded it would be this and your base would be over here. So imagine flipping this thing, this part here, upwards and over to meet that part over there. And your four sides are then going to be these sides over here. Now remember, grade 12s, that it doesn't actually matter what the shape looks like. The point is that each of these distances is equidistant. It doesn't matter where you come to in this shape, that all of the sides are the same length. So what we can do here is we can count how many um, individual square surface areas we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that we have got six squares making up the cube. And we know that um, the surface area of a square is simply S squared. And we have got six of these squares. So the formula for a cube is then going to be six times S squared. To derive the volume of anything, just remember what volume is. It's the space that something takes up. So it's the interior capacity. So remember what a cube is made up of. It's made up of a square at its base and that square is then put into the third dimension, into three dimensions. So in order to get the volume of this cube, all we need to do is work out what the, the um, area is of this base. And then we are going to multiply that base upwards by whatever the height is of this cube. And that will give us the total volume of the whole cube on the inside there. So we know that the area of a cube is equal to S times S, that surface area of the base of a square. It's S squared, right? And the height of the cube is then going to be H, standing for height. So your um, uh, volume of your cube is S squared multiplied by height. But what do we know height is? Because remember, it's a cube. All sides are equal. So that H is actually equal to just S. So your formula then is S squared multiplied by S means the volume of a cube is simply just s cubed. Now we're going to move on to the rectangular prism and you have been given formulae for the surface area um, where your surface area of a rectangular prism is length times breadth multiplied by 2, breadth times height multiplied by 2 and length times height multiplied by 2 and then your volume is length times breadth times height. 
Let's see how these are derived. Remember what a rectangular prism is made up of? It's made up of a rectangle at its base and another rectangle at its height. Sorry, that's badly drawn. And these two are connected by the height of the rectangular prism. So how are we going to work out what the surface area of this shape is? We have got six sides to this shape, and we need to now work out what each of those individual six sides are made up of. Now, because we have, are dealing with a rectangle, we um, know that there are three faces that are in fact just duplicated. The first face is this side over here, which is duplicated over there. And if my original dimensions of my rectangle are length, width, breadth, and height, these two squares that I have just um, highlighted over here, how will I work out what their surface area is? It's going to be height times breadth. So we have got two time of height times breadth surfaces. My next surface is going to be this side panel over here, where I've got one side panel over there, and then I've got another one over here. And now, how do I work out what those surface areas are? It's going to be length times by height. And I've got two of those. So each of those is length times height. Um, sorry, in yellow. Length times height. And I've got two of them. And then my last surface, um, which is going to be tricky to show up now, but just try and work with me, grade 12s, is going to be the floor if I can call it the floor, the base of my prism, and the roof or the lid of my prism. And how do we work out what those surface areas are? Well, it is going to be this bottom base, multiply, breadth rather, multiplied by the length at the base, and then over here again, breadth multiplied by length at my roof. So my um, final component of the formula is going to be length times breadth. So my total prism, rectangular prism formula is going to be 2 height times breadth plus 2 height times length plus 2 length times breadth. Now this will be given to you, but now you know how it was derived. So grade 12s, how now are we going to work out the, form, the formula for the volume of my rectangular prism? As with the cube, I want you to visualize that we're going to take the surface area of this base and then multiply it by the height, which is h. And that is how you will then fill up the entire cube with volume. So it's going to be quite a lot simpler than the surface area formula. The um, uh, formula for the base of my rectangular prism is just simply the formula for a plane rectangle, which is length times breadth. And now I need to multiply that by the height in order to fill up the whole volume of the, of the rectangle. So it's going to be length times breadth multiplied by height. And that is your formula for a rectangular prism. Now moving on to a cylinder. We've got over here the formula for the surface area of a cylinder as 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Um, you should know um, that the area of a circle is pi r squared and the circumference circumference of a circle is um, pi 2 pi r. So we know that the area and the circumference are somehow being used in this formula. And then the formula for the volume of the cylinder is going to be pi r squared, which is once again the area of a circle and multiplied by h. Now let's go and find out how they are derived, these formulae. Now grade 12s, unfortunately, um, the only the best cylinder I can think of is a toilet roll, so excuse that. Now, in terms of the surface area for a cylinder, I want you to, th to visualize and remember this toilet roll forever and the very kind of borderline gross um, example I'm going to give you. So the top of the uh, cylinder and the bottom of the toilet roll, those are your two circles, your surface areas that are going to go onto the, the roof or the lid and the base or the floor of your cylinder. Now, the outer surface area, I want you to think of that it is a piece of toilet paper that we have to wrap around this toilet roll, okay? 
So I've actually got too much toilet paper there. So it's a piece of toilet paper that you're going to wrap around this cylinder. So it is this piece of toilet paper that is actually going to represent the outer surface area, this part of your cylinder. Now remember that this piece of toilet paper, even though it looks like a rectangle, we're not going to use the formula for a rectangle, length times height or length times breadth. We need to remember that this toilet paper is actually going to be the circumference of a circle times by height. So if you can visualize that this piece of toilet paper is itself a cylinder and that circumference of the circle multiplied by the height is then what is going to be the surface area of this part of the cylinder. So to recap, your cylinder is a, a lid or a, a, um, a, a roof and a base or a floor, which is pi r squared, pi r squared, and then the circumference of the circle, that circumference there, which is 2 pi r multiplied by h. So to show you in another visual represent representation, your lid of your cylinder and your base of your cylinder, you need to use the um, formula for the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Now remember r is your radius of your circle, that's r. And we've got two areas or two circles, so it needs to be 2 times pi r squared for the base and for the um, lid of the cylinder. Then your surface area of the outer area of your cylinder, so that was the toilet paper that goes around the toilet roll, that area you need to look at the circumference of the circle and multiply that by the height of the cylinder. So the circumference of a circle we know is 2 pi r, where r is your radius once again, and we're just going to multiply that by height, by h. So your total area for your um, cylinder is going to be 2 pi r squared, so that's two circles, plus 2 pi r times by h. That is the toilet paper, and then this is the lid and the base of the cylinder. Now let's look at the volume of the cylinder. So that is going to be quite a lot easier. As I hope you've noticed from all of these examples I've shown you, your volume is always a lot easier than your surface area. So for the volume, we need to now take the um, surface area at the base here, which is the base of your circle, the base of your cylinder, which is simply just a circle. And we need to multiply that by your height to get the entire volume for the whole cylinder. So we know that the base of a um, the, the base of a cylinder is a circle. So a circle's area is pi r squared. That is the area of the base. And we need to just multiply that by h to get the total volume for the entire cylinder. Now we're going to move on to a triangular prism. The surface area for a triangular prism is split up into three components. We've got breadth times height, two length times side, and two breadth times length. The volume, we have got the standard formula for the surface area of a triangle, which is a half breadth times perpendicular height, and we're multiplying that by the height or the length of the prism. Let's work out how these formulae are derived now. To derive the formulae for the prism, we need to understand what, how it is um, shaped. So it's made up, obviously, the name gives it away, of a triangle. So remember, we're then actually going to have two triangles. We're going to have one at the front, and one at the back, if that shape makes any sense to you guys. I'm not the greatest at this, as you can tell. So there's your triangular prism. Now, the surface area, we can see that we're going to have two triangles. We're going to have a, a triangle over there at the front and a triangle at the back. So what is the surface area of a triangle? We know that it is um, a half your perpendicular height. Remember, when we're looking at a triangle, we need to know what the perpendicular height is, perpendicular being the 90 degree height. So the surface area of this triangle is going to be the same as the surface area of that triangle because they're going to have the same perpendicular height represented by small h. So it's going to be half your breadth, which is your base of your triangle, a half um, multiplied by the perpendicular height 
And because we have got two triangles, we are going to multiply that by two. So your um, surface area of your two triangles is going to work out to just B times by H, where B is the base or the breadth of your triangle, and small h is the perpendicular height of your two triangles. So that is the first component of your surface area. The next component is going to be this rectangle at the bottom here. Okay. Now that rectangle at the bottom, sorry, I didn't um, put in all the measurements at the beginning, that you're then going to have um, a measurement here of L, which is length, or actually what we would call the height of this prism if we'd flipped it on its um, base, on its triangle. So if you can picture this um, as a Toblerone chocolate, but not lying lengthways, lying on its lid or its base, you would then have your height as L. So that's quite simple. The surface area of this base is going to be B times L. Okay, that's that surface area. Then we have got another two sides of our prism that we need to look at. And picture this now as the tent. These are the two sides of the tent. We've got one over here and then one at the back there. Okay. Um, and we need to now work out what the surface area is of those. And your length of the side of your triangle here, those lengths over there, okay, that is S. So the surface area of this area, of this side of your prism, triangular prism, is going to be S times L. And we have got two of those because they're the two sides of the tent. So we're going to have 2s times L. So that gives us a total formula for the surface area of our triangular prism of B times H. And that represents the two triangles, the two blue triangles, plus the green base, which is B times L, plus the 2 times S times L. And that S times L, remember, represents the... Um, the, the side panels of the tent that are in yellow over there. And that is the surface area of the triangular prism. Now let's work on the volume. In order to work, look at the formula for the volume of a triangular prism, grade 12, so, um, do what I said in the previous little um, uh, discussion on the area. Take your Toblerone and flip it as if it is standing on one of its triangular sides, that it is not lying on its base. And this is going to make it a lot easier to understand how to look at the volume. So what we're going to do in order to work out the volume of this thing, you take this triangle, the surface area of this triangle, which is the base of your prism, and you're going to multiply that by the height of the prism so that you can get the entire volume taking up all of that space and that area. So what is the uh, volume of rather the surface area of this triangle at the base here? We know that a triangle, uh, uh, the surface area of a triangle is a half base times perpendicular height, where this is your base, that distance there is your base, this distance here over there is your perpendicular height, this is one of your sides of your triangle, just for interest sake, and this is the height or the length of your prism. So your formula for the volume is going to be a half base times height, your perpendicular height. So that then covers the entire surface area of this triangle. And then we need to multiply that by the height of our prism, which is going to be multiplied by L. And that is how we get the volume for, the, for a triangular prism. And grade 12s, what I'd like for you to do now is to use this information and go through the memos to your um, two assignments that have just been done on surface area and volume. I'm doing some videos on those. Go through those videos and see how I use this information I've given to you to work through those memos.